Good morning and welcome everyone. Thank you for joining again for those that you uh, that joined uh, the last two weeks and for those joining for the first time, welcome. My name is Jawahar. I'm the innovation lead at Lagrange Data Center Power and Control Division. Today I'm joined by Joel Bryan, who's the head of our tech support team. Uh, so he will uh, introduce uh, today's speaker and the topic. But before that, I wanted to take a quick moment to reflect on where we are. I mean, when we started this five-part series, we had no idea how the reception is going to be, if anybody is going to be interested in this or not. But when we started talking about it and brainstorming it, Joel and I just decided, okay, let's go ahead and do it. Even if we end up helping one customer with, with something, I think that's worth it. So let's go ahead and do it. And we started that way. And today it's week three, and I'm happy to share that we have more than a hundred registrations as of today. So it's a it's a great landmark uh, for us, and uh, wanted to take this moment to thank you all for the excellent support and the and the confidence you have in us uh, in in helping us with this series. So uh, again, it's a five part series. Week three, we have two more weeks to go. Each session is divided into a live demo in the for, for the first 15 minutes, and we'll have another 15 minutes open for Q&A and discussion. Um, and now I'm going to turn it over to Joel Bryan to talk about today's topic and the speaker. Joel. Okay, great. Uh, thank you, Javi. Um, as Javi said, my name is Joel Bryan, and I'm the Global Post Sales Support Director. Uh, for uh, documentation and services here at Legrand for the Raritan and the ServerTech brand. Um, and typically, Javi and I are on video and we're talking and you guys can see us, but um, there's some problems with, with GoToMeeting, so that's, that's, uh, that's why you're not seeing us today. Um, and I have this great shirt and, and uh, makeup on, so uh, <laughs> I'll save it for the next one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but today's session is um, how to safely trigger a test of the alerting system and what you should look for. Uh, we in uh, session one we we sort of set you how, showed you how to how to set up those thresholds. Now we're going to show you how to actually test those those triggers to make sure that you're indeed uh, getting what's expected. And walking us through uh, the session, and, and as the previous sessions, will be Duncan Gwynn, who is our post-sales support product specialist as part of our, our tech support organization. And as Javi, Javi said, following that, uh, we're gonna take uh, live Q&A sessions uh, you know, for anybody that has any questions related to this particular function and feature. And as usual, if you have other related issues, um, you know, it's best to, email us at, at techatraritan.com or if you want to talk to a live person, give our 800 number a call and press option six. That will get you directly to a live uh, post-sales product specialist. Okay, and with that being said, I'm going to turn this over to Duncan and Duncan is going to walk us through. Duncan, the ball is in your court. All right, thanks, Joel. Thanks, Jauhar. Um, so yeah, as mentioned, today's session is uh, how to safely trigger and test the alerting system. So thanks for joining us again. And if you recall from session number one, we did set up um, some SNMP traps as well as SMTP email alerts. So we're going to look at actually testing those alerts today. So first things first, I'm going to log in to our PDU with the admin credentials. And we are on our PDU dashboard. So, um, you know, you've, depending on what PDU you have, you may see, you know, various sensors. This is a, a single phase PDU. Um, so, you know, it, it's pretty uh, limited in terms of, you know, what you might see on a, on a three phase PDU uh, in the data center. Um, but I'm going to go into our inlet here. And you can see our various sensors. And again, if you're if you're looking at a three-phase PDU, you may see a lot more sensors because you'll see individual line currents and things of that nature. I'm going to scroll all the way down to the bottom, and we have a thresholds menu here that we can expand. 
So within this menu, you'll see that we have some, some default thresholds configured. We have RMS voltage, we have RMS current, and we have uh, this PDU has a residual current monitoring system. So uh, you may not see that depending on what PDU model you have, but this one does have that. Um, you'll notice that we have, you know, for voltage, we have a lower critical and a lower warning, as well as an upper warning and an upper critical. Um, these values are based off of the rated voltage for the PDU. So this is a 120 volt PDU, and our warning thresholds are a variance of 3%. So our lower is 3% below the rating, our upper is 3% above, and then the criticals are 6%. So um, our lower critical would be 6% below the 120 volts, and uh, the upper is 6% above. For current, um, you know, obviously we don't care about, you know, it being below a certain current value, but the uppers are configured um, by default. So um, these by default, we're looking at 65% uh, of the rated value of the PDU, and then the upper critical is going to be at 80% of the rated value of the PDU. So since we already have our SNMP traps and our SMTP email alerts configured, we actually want to test this now. Let's let's go into voltage. This is an easy one to manipulate. So we'll go into uh, highlight the line first, and then you can click edit thresholds. And then I believe we were at 117 volts on this particular PDU. So um, here's where we can you know enable disable thresholds uh, and, and edit them. And then we have uh, two other fields down here that we need to pay attention to as well. We have a a deassertion hysteresis, and we have an assertion timeout. So the assertion timeout, I'll cover that one first. This one is what it takes in, in order to, to put that sensor into its worst state. So, you know, if you're operating at normal voltage and you go into the upper warning, this is how many samples it takes in order to, to make that warning trigger. So, you know, right now it's set at zero, but, um, you know, if I have a facility with, you know, I know there's voltage fluctuations that could cause this thing to trigger frequently, um, I could modify this to be 10 samples, and then it's going to measure that voltage for 10 seconds. And if it's above the warning for more than 10 seconds, at that point, it will throw it into the upper warning state uh, or upper critical, you know, depending on what the voltage is. So that can be an important field to modify. You know, where it is right now, as soon as that crosses that threshold, it's gonna go into the, the warning or critical state. And then the deassertion hysteresis, this is the, you know, the number of units, in this case volts, that it needs to um, go back down below that threshold in order for it to clear. So with our upper critical at 127, once we get to that point, in order for it to get out of an upper critical state, it's going to have to drop down to 125, in which case it would then be in the upper warning state because we're above 124. In order for it to get out of the upper warning, it's going to have to drop down to 122. Uh, and you know, this is you can modify this field based on your needs. Um, you know, the default is two. Um, one important thing to note as well, when you do modify these thresholds, which we'll see here, I'm going to drop this down to 115. If I wanted to make this 114, it's going to give me this error. It's going to say that my upper warning plus my hysteresis has to be less than or equal to the upper critical value. So, you know, 114 plus 2 is 116. So that's a problem. So I can make that 113 or I could change the hysteresis. That's obviously very close together and it wouldn't make a whole lot of sense for us. So I'm just going to drop this down to 110 for now so we can do our test. So now that I have those changed, I can click save. And it's immediately going to go into a critical state up here. So since we have our SNMP traps configured, they're being forwarded to Power IQ currently. Um, we'll get a notification there. We're also going to get an email alert. So I'm going to look at the Power IQ dashboard first. Go ahead and refresh this page. You can see that this PDU is associated with cabinet 2B, and it's gone into a critical state. If you have your health map configured and you've got your cabinet set up, you can see that 
that is now in a critical state down here. Uh, we can click on the health tile to see what exactly is wrong. You know, we know that there's a critical uh, error there, so we need to we need to see what it is. So it gives us our vent inlet over voltage, and it tells us that the voltage 117 is over our threshold. So you know, we can do whatever we need to address that. And let me pull up the email that we got. So you can see here, we got our critical alert from our PDU name. We, our sensor voltage on PDU one inlet asserted above upper critical at 117 volts. So we know now that our SNMP alerts and our SMTP alerts are, are functional. Everything is working properly. Go ahead and put this threshold back to a reasonable value. Just gonna set it back to the defaults here. And now Power IQ's automatically cleared that critical alert because I've gone back to a normal state. So my health tile is now updated back to green and I believe we set up a, a deassertion notification as well. So we should be getting another email which we can we can look at once that hits us. Um, so that's you know inlet sensors. So you know we obviously have a variety here, but you know on a on a 5k PDU this has outlet level metering. Um, same with a 4k PDU. If you have a a PX3 you know 1000 series or 2000 series. Those will only have the inlet level sensors and the branch sensors. So, um, you know, you may have some limitations there, but uh, on a 5K and 4K PDU, you, you've got, you know, outlet thresholds as well that you can adjust. So we can go into our outlets menu, select our little icon over here and do a threshold bulk setup. And we can edit those thresholds. You know, there's no voltage uh, set by default on the outlets mostly be concerned about inlet voltage, but there is current set up that's based off of the rating of the outlet. You know, these are all um, 15 amp outlets. So, you know, D rated down to 12 amp and then a, a percentage of that. Uh, if you group outlets together, you can set thresholds on those groups as well, but you are limited to uh, alerting off of um, active energy and active power for outlet groups. If you go to OCPs, you can set up thresholds on those as well. And by default, this is going to be a percentage of the, the rated value of the circuit breaker, so 20 amp breaker, and percentage of those for the upper warning and upper critical. And then if you have um, temperature sensors, humidity sensors, things of that nature connected, they would show up in your peripherals menu. And those all have thresholds as well that you can set up and configure. So, you know, once you configure a PDU, you're probably wondering, you know, how do you now push that configuration out to your, you know, four or 500 PDUs in your data center? And, uh, you know, there are a, a few different ways to do that. But one method that I would like to mention is our bolt configuration templates. So, um, in the bolt configuration templates, there's a built-in template that includes, you know, Pretty much anything that's non-PDU specific, so it's going to leave out, um, you know, the PDU name and outlet names and things of that nature. Um, but if you wanted to do just sensor thresholds by themselves, I created this profile. But we'll look at how it's set up. So what I did here, you know, the the main filter here is all settings. You can exclude everything. So just to to have a, a clean slate. And then when we get down to PDU settings, what I've done is I've included the inlet settings, and this ignores the inlet name and the circuit breaker name, you know, because they, that may differ based on you know your, your different PDUs and different cabinets. And then I've included outlet settings, but again, this excludes the outlet names. And then I don't think I included the, the group settings, but you could if you wanted to. And then I did include um, the peripheral devices, so temperature, humidity sensors, et cetera, any, any external sensors that you have set up, uh, you can include those as well. Um, and after you do that, you can save this template, which I've already saved it, so I'm just going to hit cancel. 
and then you can download it in an encrypted format or a clear text format. And then you can use that to push those changes out to your PDUs. Uh, you know, there's a few different means of doing that. If you're a Power IQ user, uh, there is a bulk configuration activity that you can use within Power IQ to uh, use the encrypted bulk config file and, and push it out to your Raritan PDUs. Um, you can do it through USB stick. Um, if you're familiar with our USB stick configuration, you can load the bulk config onto a USB stick and then plug that into your uh, controller on the PDU and it will update that. Um, there are some other methods you can use um, a secure copy, so SCP. You can push the config over that way. And uh, there's also you know, some API methods that, uh, that can be used. So um, yeah, I mean, there's, there's a lot of different ways to do that. And that's just you know, scratching the surface of, of bulk configuration. There's a lot you can do there. Um, but yeah, I think uh, now we've concluded our, our successful test and uh, we've looked at how to, to push some of those changes out to a PDU so we can you know, ensure that all of our PDUs are set up the same way. And at this point, I think we're going to open it up for questions. I'm going to pass it back over to Joel. Okay, great. Thank you, Duncan. That was uh, really good, really good information. Um, hopefully, if you had not seen that, you, you're able to gain some value from what Duncan just showed us there and maybe apply this to, um, you know, to your particular environment. And uh, Javi, I'm going to ask, do we have any questions on the line? Yeah, we have one, Joel. It's uh, it's regarding deassertions. So, what is deassertion hysteresis? Yeah, so we we touched on that a little bit, but uh, essentially what that is, it is what it takes to clear the sensor status. So, you know, again, I'll go in here just to kind of use it as an example, and um, say that you know our facility voltage goes to 128, which passes our upper critical threshold putting our PDU in a critical state. In order for the sensor for that upper critical state to clear, we have to go down below by two volts. So it's not going to clear if I go down to 126. It's going to only clear if I go down to 125. Um, so that's the deassertion hysteresis. And, you know, that, that value can be modified you know, and, and changed as needed. But uh, it's essentially a way to keep your sensor from constantly triggering it kind of along the same lines as the assertion timeout. Uh, if you've got, you know, uh, a lot of variance in your voltage, you may, you know, adjust this to include many samples. So that way, you know, when you get an alert that it's legitimate, um, you know, it's it's been measured for, you know, 15 seconds and now it's going to go into that state. Whereas if you set it to zero, as soon as it crosses that threshold, it's going to get alerted. The deassertion is just the opposite. So it's what it takes to get it out of that state. It's essentially a margin of error, if you will, right? Yeah. So you can uh, you can suppress some noise. Exactly. Yep. Yep. So yeah, both those methods help with you know suppressing uh, you know a, a lot of alerting, and um, yeah, so, yeah. The, the deassertion, you know, if if you you have to go down below that value by however many units. If I set this to five, now I got to fix this. I can set this to 120. But um, you know, I would have to go down to one, 122 volts to get a critical status. So that's essentially what that is. Okay. Okay. Great. Thank you, Duncan. Yep. Sorry. Can can that value be set to zero? That hysteresis. Yes. Okay, thank you. Duncan, I saw another question and I assigned it to you, but I'll read it out as well. This is about bulk updates uh, regarding NTP update. It seems mm -hmm. that PowerIQ does not push that out in bulk. Maybe I'm doing it wrong, but I have configured everything in PDU, including NTP, and downloading the config pushed out that via Power IQ and most settings go out, but not NTP. So is the NTP one of the settings that do get copied? Uh, it should be. Um, I'll have to look into that a little bit and, and get back to that person. 
but yeah, it should be as that's more of a global network setting and not necessarily, you know, interface specific. Um, it should be getting pushed out. And if it's not, um, you know, we can maybe look at some some ways to to fix that. But you know, just real quickly looking at, uh, oops, went in the wrong menu. So maintenance, we're going to look at bolt configuration, and then within the network settings, we should have. Oh, actually, so that's date and time. So, so if we include our date and time settings, that should be pushed out through the config. So we can verify that looking at the clear text config file. Just see. Yeah, so it's looking like it still didn't include the date and time settings here. Yeah, we'll uh, we'll investigate that a little bit and get back to that person. Um, hopefully, we we've got some contact information for them and um, we'll see what we can do to to resolve that. It it could be by design as well. I'm not sure, but uh, I could think of it like if you if you have PDUs and different well, actually we are doing it on NTP, so it shouldn't matter. But anyway, we'll we'll confirm. Good question, though. Yeah. So there is another question on the sequence. So let me read this out. Does the sequence of config steps of thresholds and alert config matter? That is, should event rule alert be configured before thresholds are configured? Yes, event rules should be configured first. And the reason for that is if you configure your thresholds first and they go into a warning or a critical state, and then you configure your alerting, you know, either SNMP or SMTP, um, because it's already in that warning or critical state, it's not going to, it's technically not going to become asserted and trigger that alert to happen. So it, it would be a best practice to configure your event rules and notifications first and then set up a threshold that that way if you do cross that threshold you get the alert immediately uh, as opposed to it you know being hung up in the system because you configured it in the reverse order yeah another another good question and uh everybody is is unmuted at this point if you do want to just just speak up and ask a question just make sure that your laptop is is uh, or your device is, is off mute itself. Okay, uh, Javi, do we have any more questions coming up or is that? Uh... Actually, for some reason, it still shows that attendee is muted by an organizer. So I'm gonna to try to unmute again. And okay. Okay. I. Okay. So yeah. So this is uh, something strange. That some of us, some some attendees are showing up as unmuted, and some are not. So hopefully. The ones that want to ask questions have the ability to do that. If not, you can always uh, type in your questions on the chat. You can read it out. All right. Yeah, so it uh, doesn't look like we have much more coming in, Javi. So there's one more uh, just came in. How do certs get handled on the strip level? One by one, or is there a bulk method for doing those? Uh, I think they mean SSL. Yeah, so uh, I don't know if Kamal is, is available, but there is a, a method of doing this through a USB stick. Um, you know, unfortunately, there's no way to just, you know, push them out to all devices at once. There, we do have some methods available, but they still have to be signed by your CA and stuff like that. So 
as far as loading them on the PDU, we have some methods available. As far as, you know, signing them and everything like that, that depends on, you know, your certificate authority and how you're signing those. Jamal, if, if you want to clarify anything. Yeah, yeah, Duncan, you're right. So, yeah, it's done per device, per PDU basis. And if you have wildcard cert, then you can either push it through USB stick or, or the API method. Uh, but if you want a unique certificate for each PDU, and that involves, you know, generating a signing request, getting it signed, then it becomes a little, you know, complicated there. Okay, great. Thank you, Kamal. Thanks, Kamal. So we do have one more question. This may need a little bit of clarification, but I'll ask anyway. Uh, the question is, can we get any ID and password for learning it hands-on? I like believe, a sales demo PDU. I, I that's my understanding. Yeah. Yeah, I mean we have, yeah we could probably get that person in touch with a, a sales rep for their region and and see what uh, get them access to a demo PDU in terms of our, yeah, I our think online. We have demos. A, yeah, online test demo link from the product page on the Power. They can register and then they'll get an email with the access URL and the login name and password. You know, that's another method, or you can send us your contact and we'll, we'll send that information out. Okay, great, great. All right, All right so I just shared a link to the recordings of the prior two sessions. So if anybody missed and would like to catch up on those, you can do that uh, with the link that I just shared. It, it just unfortunately was uh, added with some of the long link I had before that. So I'm going to do it one more time. This should have a cleaner link. Sorry, Joel, were you, were you going to show something there? Oh no no I wasn't I I see that uh, we navigated to the to the to the uh, Raritan screen that's all okay yep okay that's all the questions I see so far um, so if there aren't any uh, other questions we can uh, wrap this up and uh, I would uh, thank Duncan Kamal and Joel yep. for uh, for today's session and. Thank everybody for joining. And uh, yeah, we can wrap this up and see you next week. Yes, thank you. Thank you all. We'll see you next week. And hopefully our video will be working so you could uh, be a little bit more interactive. All right. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thanks, everyone.